I'm Julia Skafik, the CMIO for NAC, and I'm really pleased to be able to bring um, an absolutely fantastic panel of experts today to talk about health centers and the response to the monkeypox uh, outbreak in the United States. Obviously, we're uh, thrilled to have the National Monkeypox Coordinator and Deputy Coordinator here with us from the White House, as well as the Director for HIV AIDS Policy. Um, that's part of our supportive partnerships, but also part of that is working directly with you and with your partner PCAs and HCCNs to help identify those um, successful models of care, those best practices, and then scale them across the infrastructure for health centers in a way that's really equity and social justice oriented. We know that health centers already have um, a high level of skill and mission driven work around um, HIV, STIs, sexual health, and also LGBTQIA issues. And so we've brought some of the health centers who um, are really innovative in this area to tell us what they've been doing as part of this response. So monkeypox is not an infection that exists in isolation. Um, when looking at monkeypox in eight jurisdictions using a match of their registries, 38% of individuals diagnosed with monkeypox also were known to have HIV. 41% had a diagnosis of an STI in the year prior to their, um, to their monkeypox diagnosis, and about 60% either had HIV or that STI history. So it really raises, again, to our consciousness that monkeypox exists as an interacting outbreak or interacting epidemic, something that we often call syndemics. And the syndemics here include HIV, include STD, as well as uh, important social determinants such as housing, um, as well as um, as mental health and drug use. Some really important things to note is that people living with HIV um, were often um, reporting more severe symptoms um, and were more likely to be hospitalized. Next slide, please. When looking at those individuals living with HIV and what the control of their HIV infection looked like, individuals who um, had less good control of their HIV, so who had a detectable viral load, um, had some increase in certain symptoms, but notably also were significantly more likely to be hospitalized. So you'll remember it was 8% for all people living with HIV, but for those that have a detectable viral load, it was 27%. Similar data for individuals with lower T cells, and lower here is defined as less than 350 T cells. And so 15% um, of those individuals were hospitalized. A more recent MNWR released um, on October 26th reported out on the 57, on 57 severe cases uh, that CDC was consulted with. And this, I think, really highlights the importance of approaching monkeypox within the syndemics that it exists. 82% of those 57 people had HIV. 72% of the people living with HIV um, in this small cohort had CD4 counts of less than 50. Less than 9% of them were on HIV medications, Almost 70% were Black and 23% were homeless. And so really stepping back, um, this really demonstrates the, the, the role of um, the HIV infrastructure to address monkeypox, but also the importance of HIV testing, linkage to care, and also preventative interventions like pre-exposure prophylaxis to either control or prevent HIV. 